Good morning. We are up again pretty early to get an early start for the weather. We've just stopped off at a place called Musmani, which looks to be basically the Costa Rican equivalent of Tim Hortons. So we picked up a coffee and a couple of pastries to have our breakfast, and now we are headed to Dominical because there is apparently one of the most beautiful waterfalls in the world called Nauyaka, I think it's called. So we're going to head over there now, should be another 45 minutes from here, and then we're going to go explore. The journey from our guest house ended up taking us about an hour and a half and the roads were really good until the last six and a half kilometers which was all on this rocky dirt road with so many potholes and ups and downs i didn't even know if we were going to make it i don't know if we're going to be able to make it out or not but we have arrived and you did an amazing job of driving that was by no means easy even before we got to the dirt road so Fair play to you. Thanks, babe. <laughs> okay, let's go see Naoyaka Waterfall. Naoyaka? I want to say Naoyaka. Sorry if, if we're butchering the name. We've just been to the ticket office and we got our entry to the falls. When you turn up, there are two different options. The first one is taking a 4x4 down and back up. That costs 38 USD. And then there's option two, which allows you to walk down freely and then get a lift back up, which is 28 USD. Trying to save money, so we went for option two. So it should be about a 40 to 45 minute walk down, and then we'll get a lift back up once we've enjoyed the waterfalls. about 26 minutes to walk down to the shelter which is right behind me here they have basically like a place that you can eat apparently there's wi-fi there's also toilets and showers that you can use after you've been in the falls from here it's about a 10 minute walk further to get to the waterfall one thing to note is that you need to wear either running shoes hiking shoes or like hiking sandals no flip-flops because it can be quite slippery and it is a lot of up and down if you can hear the background noise but definitely we're hearing the sound of rushing water which is a good sign clearly means we're going the right direction this seems to be where the trail splits off though you can either go to the upper waterfall or the lower waterfall and we're going to go to the upper one first <music>
is this. We are literally two of six people here. We practically have this place to ourselves. And now we're here. Let's take advantage by having a dip. busier than when we got here. There are over 20 people here now. So it's definitely a good thing we got here when we did and honestly it is rainy season technically but that means the humidity is crazy. So definitely a really nice and refreshing way to cool off. We're now going to head back up and take the bus back up to the main office. not be more proud of this little car. It handled like a champ on what can only be described as an off-roading adventure. <laughs> but it's got us safely back on the main road and my one tip for driving along that dirt road is just to go slow and steady and by that I mean at like 20 kilometers an hour. Before we crack on with the rest of this journey though, then we definitely want to give a shout out to the company through whom we booked all of this stuff and that was Naoyaka Waterfall Nature Park because in amongst providing us with access to private walkways and obviously giving us the ride back which was great, the facilities that they have available are superb. The shelter has a bunch of picnic benches, hammocks, even has a little food prep station if you bring your own food, showers, toilets, and free water as well. There's also a huge Jenga there. Yep, there is free Jenga, and there's also a number of plants along the path down to the waterfalls where you can see the types of stuff that can grow there, all sorts of different fruits and other plants that we use in day-to-day -day cooking around these parts which is amazing. And then up at the main center, then you have access to free coffee as well as more free water. Another amazing little seating area. There's free games available. And then if you want to go the booze route or have like maybe something a little bit more exciting than water on the cold drinks front, then those are available for a small fee on top of that. Oh, and we should also mention that they have Wi-Fi both at the main office and at the shelter. Exactly. So don't get me wrong, one might generally bog at the idea of 28 USD per person for doing this kind of thing, but with all of the added mod cons, then it does actually seem worth it. And we're budget travelers, so if we think it's worth it, I think that says something. Exactly. All right, back to Manuel Antonio we go. Thank you along with those. In the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. Good morning. So we have just arrived at our first stop of the day. Before we left Manuel Antonio, we stopped at the same bakery as yesterday to pick up a few pastries. And then we drove along the exact same road as we did yesterday, but just a little further down. So this drive, I think, took us an hour total since there was hardly any off-roading. And we are now in the town of Uvita. And our first stop here is at Uvita Waterfall.
managed to make it down and we are the only ones here right now. Apparently it cost 2,000 colonas to get in, but there was no one sitting there to take payment. So maybe we can pay on the way out. The good news is it's only a five minute walk down, so it's a lot easier to get to than now Yaka yesterday. But the nice thing is that we can also take an early morning dip here. They say cold therapy is good, right? Let's find out. What a truly refreshing way to start the day. Maybe this needs to become a new habit. I would love that. Mm -hmm. You'll be happy to hear that when we came back up to the top, the owner had opened up shop, so we did not slip out without paying. We paid our 4,000 colones for the two of us, which is about 11 Canadian dollars. Now we're going to be driving about 10 minutes down the road to Marino Ballenas National Park. We've just arrived to Marino Baena National Park and it cost 3,000 colones to pay, which is just under 10 Canadian dollars. And it cost us 13 US dollars total for both of us to get in. For anybody who speaks Spanish, then you'll know that the word Ballena means whale. That is apt for this national park for a couple of reasons. The first is that this is an extraordinary breeding ground for humpback whales alongside other species of whales and dolphins. The other thing is that at low tide, the shape of the land here creates a sandbar which is in the shape of a whale's tail. And that's what we're here to try and see. Unfortunately, we don't have a drone so we won't be able to capture it by air, which is probably the best view that you can get of it. But we'll do our best to capture what we can. And before you come here, just make sure you Google the high tide and the low tide so that you come at the right time. the start of the sandbar we are looking directly down the whale's tail and you can see how the sandbar kind of separates the beach on this side here with this curve and then on the other side with that curve there and then the whale's tail it separates into two fins all the way down here on this side and all the way down there on that side. So I think we're just gonna walk down and see if we can get a better perspective. the end of the sandbar and what you're seeing is one side of the whale's tail and then as we look back you can see the sandbar splitting the beach into two different bays before then coming back to the other side of the whale's tail
it as early as we have done has really served us well. For one, this beach is absolutely huge. And so if there aren't a lot of people on it with you, then you almost feel like you have an exclusive part of the beach to yourself. And also by getting here early, we are now leaving when a bunch of people are setting up shop and having themselves a proper beach day. So if you want to be a little bit further away from the crowds and all that kind of jazz, then try and get an early start to your day and really enjoy this as much as possible. Yeah, you could definitely spend an entire day here, even a half day, especially if you love the beach. Nick and I have realized over the course of our travels that we aren't really beach people. So we're not the type to just set up shop, but if you are, then you can bring water and food and drinks into this national park. So you can just have a picnic and stay all day, go in and out of the water as you please, basically. Exactly. And you're probably wondering why we haven't featured any showings of whales. Unfortunately, it's not quite the season for that. We just missed the window i think but hopefully another time when we do come here then we'll be a little bit more fortunate even though we didn't get to see any whales and we're not beach people i still think it's worth coming because we did take a dip in the water which was really refreshing we walked along the beach which was pretty we got to see more rainforest i mean the color of the water here is absolutely stunning just the expanse of beach i still think it's worth coming because it's really not that expensive a stop a hundred percent another one to add to your list that makes up pretty much everything that we're planning on doing in and around manuel antonio so we will be picking up our next video at our next destination here in costa rica until next time though take care and keep smiling